So in this Photoshop for Beginners film, we're going to be looking and trying to unravel many of the complications of layers. Uh, layers are probably the most powerful thing within the Adobe Photoshop world, as it were, as they allow us to kind of stack um, images, textures, colors, um, anything really on top of each other. They also are allowed to interact with each other and we can change the way that they interact with each other as far as opacities and different kind of tonalities and color changes as well. Um, so really what we're going to be kind of working up to is looking at um, an image that is basically a nice photograph and looking at kind of adding a background onto the image to give it a texture in the background. So one of the most common things that we're going to do is adding texture onto things, adding text onto things, changing backgrounds, manipulating, retouching. All of these things are going to take place in the likes of uh, the layers. So let's kind of just start from scratch with this image and we'll kind of do the basics first so you can understand um, where to start and then we'll actually try and make it a little bit more kind of advanced to you as well and things really. So in part one, we looked at the automation uh, as well as the auto mode. So in other words, we looked at if we duplicated a layer, control J, remember one of the most powerful short, shortcuts you'll learn uh, to duplicate that layer. And then if we want to, we can go in and try and use one of the, or, uh, the auto commands like auto tone, auto contrast and auto color. In this case, we'll just choose color. And then um, Photoshop will try and do a job of kind of fixing things. So straight away, when we duplicated that layer, we've kind of uh, got a new layer on top. And just to switch it on and off, basically, uh, it's just clicking onto the eye icon. The little eye will switch it on and off. Now, in part one, we also show, showed you how to basically uh, all automate using the likes of actions um, a technique that you're going to use time and time again so in other words the auto color auto contrast and auto tone in those actions that we created they allowed us to create or duplicate the new layer and then actually na uh, name it and then go ahead and actually apply one of the effects that we're doing here but these also will interact with each other uh, even though there's slight differences. And this is where we kind of will start to look at the blend modes and how they will actually affect the image depends on the one that we're trying to choose. So remember these films are really for complete beginners in Photoshop and kind of trying to unravel some of the, the kind of the, uh, the basics of kind of making the image great as it were. So um, I suppose at this point we need to first of all go back to what is a layer and how does it all work. And I've basically uh, created, um, I've got this image that I shot in Venice and on top I've just simply created some black, grey, a gradient and white squares. Now um, the reason that I've done this to begin with is because when we group them together and we apply a blend mode change, we'll be able to see the difference that they all make to the image behind. However, um, if we kind of um, just look at the, the basics to begin with as far as layer stacking, moving layers and so on with it. OK, so let me first of all just select on the black layer. Now, I've automatically done that. Um, if I kind of select through the click onto the different um, colors here, you can see as I click on gray, it goes to the layer. Now that's because I've got the auto select layer uh, clicked on the top here. If that is not clicked, it doesn't matter which of the layers I select on, it basically is not going to do the job as it were. So in this case, I definitely want to actually put the auto select on. Now, if we think of layers like a book and we're looking down on a book, basically, if black was the cover, nothing below is going to be seen. Um, however, if the cover was semi-transparent or fully transparent, we would start to actually see what is below. And obviously, as these uh, are all stacked on or below each other, 
uh, basically they'll work in slightly diff different ways so let me just do that so if that is the kind of cover as I put it uh, over the middle basically it's blocking everything here but as I start to actually change the opacity we start to see through so we can see that gray yes is on top of the gradient and white is below all and but it is on top of the background image so fundamentally if you want something to be on top in other words on top of sub something else you just select it by either selecting it on the layers palette here or clicking onto it if you haven't got the auto select checkbox there if you right click okay you will find um, within the image you can select what one you're trying to actually select so in this case it's white yes and that would actually select the white um, so just kind of uh, as I move that around now if I want that to be on top all I've got to do is move it up the layer stack so here it would be just looking for the double uh, blue line and if I let it go there it would be on top of the gradient if I drag it and pull it right to the top basically you can now see it's on top with it so in exactly the same way as we looked at the the black here and we changed its opacity if we choose the white and we change its opacity it starts to show through as well so that's the kind of the the basics of the kind of the layers think of them like pages in a book if the page gets wet or the page is very very thin um, you'll basically be able to actually see what is behind it you won't exactly be able to see behind it of course because obviously as you go through the different layers they're darkening dark uh, darkening as they kind of go through as well so you'll probably actually only get to so deep before you can't see any more below the pages it doesn't matter how transparent they are right let's uh, reset this for a minute okay so let's just kind of go to our black put our white down here I'm just there now one of the things that you should see is these uh, kind of magenta markers that are kind of um, coming into play and that is um, because uh, they're kind of clicking to guides or snap to guides they're showing me where these guides are and as I overlay them to each other it will show me when they align to each other and uh, basically you'll set uh, you'll set that up in the likes of Windows um, uh, where you'll show the different kind of uh, palettes here um, or you'll basically go into the view where you actually start to actually see what it's going to snap to show guides lock guides new guides and so on with it okay so as far as the um, layers are concerned because I've got that auto select on I can grab any way I want let's just um, reset this to 100% so if I click on a layer and I press on the numeric the zero this resets the uh, layer to 100% opacity so in other words nothing can see through it if I basically select the number 5 on the keyboard this sets it at 50% if I set number 1 and 5 that would be 15% so you can basically control the opacity either from the keyboard itself or from going up to the opacity and either clicking on the dubber or over the opacity name itself you'll see that when you kind of just hover above above it a little hand appears that's what we refer to as a scrubby and you can move it left to have um, less um, visibility block in other words it's less opacity and then full opacity is when we push it towards the right and things really so we understand how that works the next thing is all also if I drag black back on top for a minute okay you can see that white now is on top and we want it to be at the back so remember select white drag it below to the place where you want it to be and you've reorganized it let's select black again so remember the auto select is uh, in place so I can just click on it now um, what I want to look at now is the kind of the blend mode and the blend modes are in a drop-down menu here 
and you'll be able to change the way how it interacts with the layer below. Now by default it's set to normal but we've got um, all the different kind of uh, ways that it will react with other things. Okay. Now each one of these bled modes will uh, change the way that it interacts with whatever is behind it. And one of the reasons I did um, the black, the grey, the gradient and the white is so that we can see how it basically in interacts when, with the different tones. So you can see how black interacts with um, uh, the greys, but if I set the white, yes, and I bring that just below black, and I set that into the um, o overlay, you can start to see now how it basically brings more contrast within the image. And then as I kind of bring the white um, in front of the gray now, okay, you start to see how it completely changes the, the way of the, in, of the interaction uh, is going to go on. And now I promise you, it doesn't matter how long you've been in Photoshop, you're basically going to fiddle around with the blend modes for a very, very long time. So the reality is there's going to be some key ones you're going to use more often than not. Right, just before we kind of show you the most basic ones what to apply, we want to talk about um, grouping these kind of uh, layers together. So in other words, if I kind of select on them first of all, and if I want to them to act as one as far as when I move them around, um, I want to lock them. And just on the palette here, on the layers palette, you can see I can just click on the lock and now basically when I move one or select one, the others will move with it as well. However, they don't interact together as far as the changes are concerned unless they're all selected at the same time. If one is selected, then basically only that one is going to change its blend mode. There is a way to make all of these interact in the same way together and that would be to put them into a group and we can do that by first of all coming down onto the bottom of the layers palette and clicking on the folder icon which is create new group within here we can call it whatever we want whoops uh, call it whatever we want so it's uh, mono okay so within here now I can either go ahead and basically create because it's highlighted if I create by clicking on the uh, plus little thing um, I'm going to create a new layer within here so if I basically just fill it with a color so in this case if I press the alt key and the backspace it fills it with the foreground color if I press the control key and the backspace it fills it with the background color. So if I quickly go over to the tools palette here and where we can see the foreground and background colors, if I was to click onto the white and I select red and then I click on the blue, uh, the black and I select a blue, it means now when I click on the alt and the backspace it fills it again with a blue color because it's the foreground color and when I click on the control key and the backspace it will fill it with the background color so just to give you kind of uh, fundamentals of, of what we're doing so to delete a layer I'm just going to drag it down to the little bin and then it's gone as I was saying to you I want to uh, duplicate um, or oh, sorry control all these at once E easily and I'm going to just select all four of them and drag them now into the new uh, kind of group or folder or set or whatever it is. Now of course instead of having to switch one off individually all the time each one of them I can just select the group as it were and basically switch them all together. Now the good thing about that is that uh, by design you can see it uh, when you create yourself a new group yep remember we get it from here in this little icon which is a full a folder 
but um, once we've created it and then we've put things in it um, by default it's passed through um, but we can actually go ahead now and actually change this and use the blend modes and it's going to apply the blend mode to each one of those different um, elements the other thing you should note though is that when they're in a, um, a folder a group yes uh, basically what happens is that when you select one um, it's going to still move them all all right so if you want just the uh, one to actually move by itself you uh, click it first hold the control key yes and that will help you but if you unlock it from the the link here yes now we basically use the control key it separates itself away from the others so if you've locked all of your um, uh, positions or layers together you're going to struggle to basically lock them so remember when you're selecting a image like the gray if I select one it moves them all if I press the control key it still moves them all okay I have to unlock it here by just clicking on the little lock and now it basically if I don't select that one layer by itself okay it's gonna still move all the images so in other words when I'm selected on all of the group it moves everything together I forgot I got the auto select on <laughs> sorry if I had the auto if I didn't have the auto select on basically it moves them all together <laughs> if I have the auto select switched off <laughs> uh, or switched on I should say then it basically allows me to move uh, to move that around so stack in everything else now one of the things of course you've got to remember is that if you try and save an image now when it is basically um, with stacks like we are here it cannot be stored as a JPEG any anymore you'll have to either store it as a, a common file which is PSD Photoshop layered file uh, or even a TIFF file and things really so when you go into file and save as what you'll find is that you're restricted on what you can actually save these things as obviously it's taken up a much bigger file size as well so you want to remember to actually just use the actual uh, layers in the way that you uh, want to save save them so if you don't need them get rid of them um, for another time so in the same way the most common things to use are if we just control J to duplicate that for one minute and we're going to use the two most common things that you'll use pretty much most of the time it's going to be a multiply to darken I'll duplicate that again I should just actually call that darken for a minute and this is uh, lighten so just going up to here now and we actually do the screen mode or lighten I tend to use the screen mode um, so now what we've got is basically either a darken mode and if you prefer the multiply is the best method for that rather than darken in fact so multiply yes and that does pretty much a similar job and as I said the lighten one is basically in screen mode okay so those are the two most uh, used um, that you'll kind of uh, uh, use time and time again so remember even though that this is the same image the only thing I've done in the blend mode is turn it from one thing to another so if I screen you can see it's lighter yes if I switch that one off and I switch the multiply mode on you can see it's here and in exactly the same way if we were to duplicate this layer again right click duplicate layer or drag it down to the plus yep so I can just do that one you can see it gets darker and darker and dark darker if I continue to do that it becomes pretty much uh, as dark as night itself okay so think about what you're trying to achieve with your image think about what you're trying to fix is is the kind of the key element with it and um, 
in the next part of this film we'll continue with working with layers but we'll look at it at a more creative effect and make it a little bit more advanced. Thank you.